Men are taught to think big. They're taught to create the businesses, to be their own boss, to change the world. Women are taught to think small. I'm here to tell you, you can think big as a woman. You can change the world. You can be your own boss. You can make money. I recognise there are barriers, patriarchal barriers, that definitely do exist. But I think the biggest barrier that exists is the self-doubt, is the self-sabotaging. This troubled world really needs empowered women. It needs women that are prioritising themselves. Hello, my beautiful women. I'm excited to be here with you right now. I'm feeling quite calm and connected to you because I've been responding to some previous comments from other videos. So know that I'm giving off this, this good energy right now. So hopefully you'll be able to absorb some of that and feel it yourself. One of my goals at the moment is to only really film when I'm able to emit this calming and passionate and excited energy. I want you to benefit from how I'm feeling and feel it through the video. Because I definitely notice, maybe it's the empath in me, I notice when other creators are feeling down or feeling excited or feeling confident and I feed off of that. So I want you to feed off of my good mood right now. So as women, we are taught to doubt ourselves, to doubt our intelligence, to doubt our strength, to doubt our inner beauty. And on top of that, we're also distracted. We are taught to focus on how we look, on our appearance, on trying to lose weight, on trying to get into a relationship and get married and have kids. Um, so much of our time and energy is put into things that aren't conducive to strengthening our self-esteem and our independent lives. I really do believe that we are under this patriarchal spell and this really just disconnects us from our inner power. But do you know how we break the spell? We learn about the spell existing in the first place. And that's what I'm here to do today, to let you know that you are actually really powerful. Seeds of doubt are being sown in your mind by patriarchy. Messages are being put into your head that you are not enough until you are fancied by a man, until you are in a relationship. That's been put in your head to make you focus on things that are actually kind of out of your control. Do you know what's in your control? Your story, how you choose to move and navigate. So today I'm here to give you your power back, to help you stop self-sabotaging. And I'm also here to remove some of that shame. As women, I think we judge ourselves quite a lot because the world judges us and the world makes us kind of think that we're to blame for the bad deal we've been given in life, but we are not to blame. We live in a world where the power imbalance is real. We live in a very sexist world where women aren't praised or celebrated or uplifted, but we are so powerful and strong and our minds, <gasps> are filled with amazing ideas. We have so much potential and there is so much room for female success. I'm noticing at the moment, there is such an appetite for female creators. Hence the Barbie movie doing so well. People want to hear women's wisdom. I'm gonna share with you my pearls of wisdom that have helped me get out of my own way and stop self-sabotaging. And maybe then you can get out of your own way. Let go of that nice girl syndrome. Wow, has this plagued me and my friendships and relationships and perception of what I could do for so long. I've limited myself by telling myself, I need to be the nice girl. I need to look after other people at the expense of my own quality of life. Being perceived or seen as the nice girl shouldn't take priority over you being happy, over you being yourself, over you following your unique path. I know as women, we're not only afraid of being seen as selfish, but we're also afraid of feeling that. The shame is really quite deep rooted. Women are so willingly labelled as selfish or intimidating or scary or up themselves. All across the media there are examples of women being taken down if they stand strong. 
successful women are scrutinized. So I really get why you are trying to tread carefully and make sure that you're still being perceived as this nice, kind, sweet woman. Our society does set us up to fail as women. Even when we do reach success, we're gonna be scrutinized for our relationships or our personality. Are we too much? Are we too serious? Are we too opinionated? Women are set up to fail. And once you kind of acknowledge that, it's kind of relaxing because you know, actually, you know, I'm gonna be quizzed by some people. I'm gonna be doubted by some people. I'm gonna be labeled this and that when I do start to step into my power. But it's okay because the people that are labeling me those negative things when I am just showing up as myself and looking after myself are just sexist or ignorant to the fact that, you know, a woman looking after herself is not selfish. She's just wise, you know? You have to fill up your own cup before you're able to fill up other people's cups. When I was so concerned with coming across as the nice girl, I was surrounded by people that didn't care about me. I felt super alone and I wasn't doing what I wanted to do in life. Now I'm really detached from coming across as the nice girl. I'm able to feel really connected to the people around me. I'm finding success in what I do and I'm following the path that actually isn't traditional, but actually that suits me. I'm making these videos and I felt so attached to coming across as the nice girl. I wouldn't make these videos, but these videos are everything I care about. I love connecting with women on these topics that are taboo. I call out men a lot in my videos. I call out patriarchy. And if that's gonna mean that I'm labeled as too much or too serious or all these negative things, then that's fine because that's what I believe in. And I'm happy to let go of that nice girl syndrome in order to empower other women, in order to empower myself. Nice girls don't get a nice life. Nice girls don't get to be opinionated. Nice girls don't get to actually find themselves and feel deeply fulfilled in the relationships they're in, in the life that they're existing in. Drop the nice girl syndrome. see your power. If you've got something you're naturally curious about and excited about, maybe it's mental health, maybe it's personal development, maybe it's art, maybe it's music, maybe it's content creation, you are powerful. You've got serious meaning and purpose on this planet right now that you can tap into. You can really flourish if you lean into those natural talents and curiosities. But are you self-sabotaging? And are you saying, actually, I'm more concerned with how other people perceive me, or actually, I want to fit into that nine to five box because I don't wanna break the mold and it's just too uncomfortable for me. Or are you saying, actually, I'm scared of coming across as a failure if my first few videos that I post don't get all the views and all the likes? Are you getting in your own way? And are you doubting yourself? If that's a yes, then that's okay. It's okay to doubt yourself, but it's not okay to doubt yourself and then do nothing and not challenge yourself and move past that doubt. I really did feel those moments of, oh, it's quite awkward that this didn't do as well or, oh, that video didn't perform as well as I wanted to, but it didn't stop me from continuing to make more videos. Forget trying to make lots of money. Forget trying to impress your friends or your parents. Forget trying to fit into the nine to five mold. What do you deeply care about? What are you curious about? What are you gravitated towards? What topics? Lean into that and you will find success. Doubt might crop up, things might put you off, being bold with your creations, with your research, with your output of this passion. Acknowledge those feelings of doubt, of insecurity, of judging maybe yourself and how you're gonna come across. Acknowledge that you're feeling that way. Journal about it, let it out and move on and continue to challenge yourself. You can't avoid doubt and fear because we're kind of programmed as humans to protect ourselves. And our mind might think about how other people are gonna perceive us in order to kind of protect us. But, you know, posting a video about something that you're really passionate about isn't gonna put you in that danger. So just remind yourself of that and move through the doubt and remind yourself that you're coming from a place of love, you're coming from a place of authenticity, and that is enough. If it makes you feel good, 
then you can help other people feel good off the back of that. Fears are going to come up, but they don't need to stop you. They can limit you and they can pause you and they can lead you to self-reflect and figure you know those fears out, but they don't need to stop you. If you are doing paintings in your spare time, if you're watching other artists create paintings on YouTube, if you're talking with your friends about your art, you're an artist, so call yourself an artist. Take your passion seriously. Don't say, oh, this little painting, this painting. As women, I think we add little before something that we've done that's actually quite impressive to try and come across as humble. You don't need to do that stand in your pride. I've come across so many women that just have this like abundance of ideas, creative ideas that they just don't act on because they don't recognise how powerful that is. I see it, but that's not going to help them see it. I'm naturally curious about psychology and women and self-love and at the beginning of my career I was a beginner but I had that curiosity and it was a good place to start and because I was so excited about that topic I knew that I would research and I would completely immerse myself in that world in those articles in that research and I would become this kind of expert this person that knows a lot so I really urge you to trust in your passions in your curiosities they will take you places men are taught to think big they're taught to create the businesses to be their own boss to change the world women are taught to think small i'm here to tell you you can think big as a woman you can change the world you can be your own boss you can make money i recognize there are barriers patriarchal barriers that definitely do exist but I think the biggest barrier that exists is the self-doubt, is the self-sabotaging. When you set your mind to something, there is usually a route that you can go down that will help you get there. Women's voices, women's art, women's creations need to be amplified. Look at the state of our world. There's a lack of women's touch. Nature is suffering, people are suffering. This troubled world really needs empowered women. It needs women that are prioritizing themselves and other women. By the way, my beautiful people, I really quickly want to say I've developed a self-love and decentering men program for women. And if you want to connect with me on that basis and receive my resources so you can kind of have this transformational process, my email is in the description box. Pop me an email, ask me some questions, we can get the ball rolling. Don't seek comfort, seek a healthy challenge. We all benefit as humans from predictability. It makes us relax, it makes us feel calmer, it allows our minds to switch off, our bodies to melt a little bit. You know, we don't wanna feel tense all the time and when we are challenging ourselves, we do feel a little bit on edge, we do feel a bit tense, a bit anxious. But there is a time and a place for repeating our habits and that's within our kind of morning routines and our nighttime routines. Routine is really healthy but challenging yourself is also healthy. Saying to yourself look I recognize that I could stay at home and that could be comfortable because I do that all the time. I could stay at home and I could watch tv or I could go to that yoga class, I could meet some new people, I could experience something new and it could feel quite uncomfortable at first but it could really make me feel closer to people, less alone, more excited about life. Nothing changes if nothing changes. If we continue to do the same things every day, our life will look the exact same. So if you want more for yourself, you need to do more for yourself. Sometimes we do just want to laze around and not challenge ourselves and I really get that. We have to kind of be intuitive and recognise when we're pushing ourselves too much and when we're just pushing ourselves gently in the right direction.
the what ifs can really put us off challenging ourselves from going to that yoga class, from asking that person if they want to go for a coffee. What if they don't like me? What if they think I'm weird? What if I don't actually enjoy it? The what ifs haven't even happened yet, but we're thinking about them as if they are our reality, as if they are just complete truth. When you get that niggling worry, that niggling thought, what if I come across as weird? Acknowledge that that is a what if, not a when. A lot of the time our what if worries don't even show up in our actual lives. They just remain a thought, a worry in our head. When the what ifs come up, we don't need to attach ourselves to them. We don't need to say to ourselves, these are concrete truths. We can gently observe them and move on. This is the tip I'm most excited to share with you. Think about long-term you. When you make decisions, think about how future you would feel about this decision that you've made. Future you will probably thank you for going to that yoga class because now they've got lots of friends from that yoga class. Now they feel calmer and more centered in their body. Present you probably doesn't want you to go to the yoga class. They'll probably convince you to stay in your comfort zone so you don't have to experience that anxiety as you're walking to the yoga class and all the what if worries. So think about long-term you when you are planning to do something out of your comfort zone. Picture long-term you thanking you. Present day you will probably get you to just chill at home and just do what you're used to. Okay, I want you to quickly pause this video and I want you to either write down or visualize a moment of success that has occurred in your life. It might feel like a mini moment of success. It doesn't need to be anything extravagant, like getting this job or going solo traveling. It can be something smaller, but still powerful. I want it to be a powerful memory. And I want you to immerse yourself in that memory, in how it felt and what you could smell, what you could hear. This memory will help you acknowledge your power. It will help you acknowledge how you are capable of asking for more from the world on creating success for yourself. One memory that I've actually shared in, I think my Decentering Men video that I latch onto that really felt like a, a moment of success for me was when I at university put my hand up and vocalized my opinion in a debate. I was the only girl in the room and I was really intimidated by the politics boys that I was having this debate with, but I had a really passionate opinion and I decided to put my hand up and vocalize it and speak against what all the other people had been saying. And I managed to persuade this person to kind of agree with me. And actually throughout my education experience, I had all these ideas and thoughts in my head that I just kept to myself because I was so scared of speaking out in front of other people. That made me feel quite disappointed in myself and it just made me feel in this kind of like low state and when I put my hand up and I spoke out, it felt like a real moment of, wow, I can do this. I can vocalize my opinion, even in front of all these guys as the only woman. I have power and I have a voice and I'm intelligent. And it, it really was, I think, this pivotal moment. And I, I like to remind myself of that moment. So think of a memory of a time that you made yourself proud, where you challenged yourself. Immerse yourself in that memory and remind yourself daily if you need to, that you can do something out of your comfort zone and achieve more for yourself, that you are capable of doing anything. You are, you're so talented, you're so brave, you are so resilient and you want more for yourself and you can create more. You are full of potential, my lovely, and I know the world that we live in doesn't make women feel like they are clever, intelligent, capable of doing whatever, capable of leading people, but we are so capable. I meet so many women that are just so wise. I'm an example of how you can walk through that fear, that doubt, and do something that just feels right. I hope you enjoyed this video, my lovely. If you want to connect with me and you want to receive the resources from my self-love and decentering men program, my email is in the description box. Love you lots.